is like a weapon of mass destruction. Because he spent years trying to find himself with no success. I'm gonna find you and take it. The bells and the sandstorms left him confused, so, so he lost himself under the bulletproof. Ready or not, here I come. I am a monster. Borrowed skin and limbs unknown from a cemetery. I've always been too proud to beg for beauty, so, so some people say that I'm a natural and, and others say that I'm unlovable. Everyone is right. In his 2007 book, Monsters Among Us, American author Brad Steiger writes, Bigfoot, sea monsters, werewolves, and the like may be quasi-real creatures that are manufactured by the human collective unconscious. What Steiger doesn't examine is the way our fascination with searching for mythical monsters obscures an examination of the monstrous conditions, behaviors, and realities around us. Monsters may fleetingly live in our imaginations, but they most often and too often live in the human conditions of abuse, hatred, war, and pestilence. Using Right or Not by the Fugees, The 11th Hour, Series of Crash and Burn by Lisa Harris, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse by Joshua Bennett, Birmingham by Jasmine Manns, and Monster by Adam Alexander a program where we turn off our nightlights and shine a spotlight on the real human monsters that are not hard at all to find. Oh, I'm a motherfucking monster! Yeah, I'm wrong. Backwards. Nuclear bombs got skylines doing backflips. Fighter jets with just high-tech paintbrushes by my name across the horizon. Say my name again, and I'll show you what I'm good for. Wallets full of corpses, Sandbox bursts over bones, color folks down on both sides come to camouflage, don't recognize each other's faces. Who? I am balling! <laughs> Dollar bills are the only things that can hide in the bodies, too. But next time, that hoe better have my money. Mama, Mama said the bomb wasn't meant for me. I think it was meant for Pastor Martin because he'd be having a dream. That maybe those white men didn't know that with the black girls would be going to church too. And we'd be folding our hands, praying, taking communion, just like their daughters do. Maybe if I wore my church shoes, the bad man would have never came for me. I know they, they match my dress, but, but they always just be hurting my feet. Be protected. No longer belong to the American dream, now a checkout at the local supermarket. Each can of Campbell's is an IED. He doesn't really understand what it means because his military speak, and he knows that he's afraid to touch it, but everyone looks at him like he's some sort of freak. But that thing right there killed two of his bunkmates and commanding officer. Now he's standing in a parking lot threatening a customer with a janitor's mouth instead of car keys. I'm the honor of the Uncle Sam and your doctor. Well, actually, a pharmaceutical CEO rides his white Mustang past Chicago mom and pop corner stores. A play, the life as you know it. Time to hard to take the candy from my hand. The first one's always free. <laughs> Lord knows he's not doing the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that, my friend, is the angel's nest in me. Well, I am a monster, and I saw the playground with crack rocks. <laughs> We're playing with his sanity. The pills they keep giving him are just technical explosions going off in his gut, and I swear, it's trying to be indoctrinate this program. But his brain's already on autopilot and the rocket's already engaged. Woo! Everybody's going to die straight up. No other way to describe it. I mean, I make my paycheck on pimping a lifeless. So consider me your personal trainer, preparing you for judgment. Mama said that 
that some sacrifice just comes without permission, that some sacrifice just comes without fair warning, that some death just be labeled too black or too white to be labeled holy, that some church might just be swimming in baptismal pools, and some servants just be screaming America's dirty little secret. That God can't always protect you from the boogeyman, so. So some baby girls will reach the pearly gates and she. And she won't be tall enough to reach the handle. When I was young, a man once loved me so much that he broke me to ensure that there could be no one after me. He swapped my insides for cotton and hid my skin for burlap. I guess you could say our relationship was violent, but, but it wasn't, you see. See, a little girl throwing flowers into the water taught him that beautiful things belonged into the ocean, but, but the current froze me disgusting. And all I wanted was an embrace that could warm me and an ear that could listen. He told me I was crazy because I showed him the darkest parts of my life only thinking that his smile would make them bright. Mama said that some men will be too guilty to claim innocence with Christ. wanted to play with the white girls. I, I never asked for integration. All I wanted was, was, a, was a pair of roller skates or oh, maybe even an extra piece of cake at dinner time. I just be thinking that maybe God was too busy trying to protect Mark to think about me. I never asked for his dream. I'm now standing here lifeless on a bad man's table waiting for a stranger's lightning bolt kisses to bring me back to life. And I will utter these last few words below Sila. Someone, please, love me. Make me human again. <coughs> My name Private Jones, member of Alpha Squadron Battalion 6. Those are the only words he can say when his wife asks if he still loves her. He sobs in his wife's arms and, <coughs> and tells her that all he wants to do is go back. He felt more comfortable with dead bodies in Iraq. sleeps in his own basement for fear that he'll strangle his own children. Post-traumatic stress disorder is a ravenous dream, made obsolete in a society that wants him to fight, but all he now wants is peace. So the pitter patter of his two-year-old's feet is enemy gunfire, and to the left, Crayons on a page is just the scratching of torture instruments. So when his son asks him about the colors, all he can think of is the blood. <laughs> 